This is going to be a demonstration of a class of optimization problems known as network models. And within that class, I'm going to go through an example of a transportation problem. In a typical transportation problem, you are trying to minimize costs while meeting some demand. You're going to be moving products from maybe a manufacturing facility known as an origin to a distribution center and this is called the destination. The problem is going to have to give you capacity, so what each facility can supply. It's going to have to give you requirements, so what forecasted demand is, and then it's going to give you cost to transport each of the items along a specific path. And like other optimization problems, you're going to have inputs, decisions, and an objective. So in this example what we're going to be doing is looking for the most economical way to ship widgets from one of three manufacturing facilities to one of four distribution centers while we meet demand and protection constraints. You can generally graphically depict what's going on. So you can see over here on the left I have the three manufacturing facilities and from each of those facilities, uh, we have a path to deliver our products from uh, origin to one of the four destinations. Okay, so with that preamble, what we'll do is jump into the Excel model. Okay, and I've set up some of this ahead of time. We have our uh, three facilities and we have our four destinations. And then for each of the facilities, uh, we have a cost to ship a widget from A to A, B, C, or D. Okay, so down below what we're going to do is build our recommended shipping model. And like all optimization problems, I think the, the biggest problem people generally have is that they're surprised by how much of the work you have to do before you actually start Solver. So you actually have to build the model first and then Solver goes through and does its thing. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is have to come up with capacities uh, for each of these facilities. So for A, we can build 4,500. Uh, for B, we can build 2,500. And then for C, it's 5,000. Okay, next I'll fill in the demands. And they're forecasted to be 4,300, 2,000, 2,800, and 2900. Okay, with that bit of bookkeeping done, we can start to build the actual model. And I'm going to put in some seed values here so we can see what's going on. All right, and I'll just start with the simplest case, putting one in each one of our changing cells. And then we're going to be comparing the amount we recommend to ship to a capacity. And we're going to have to ship less than or equal to. Uh, the plant's capacity. So I just sum that up and then I'll copy that down. Okay, I'll go ahead and sum up the demands. We can see we're going to have to try to meet 12,000. All right, and then we're going to be comparing the amount shipped or received at a facility to the demand. And we're going to have to meet or exceed the demand in order for the model to be solved. So again, I'll just sum this column. All right, it's going to be the same formula in all these cells, so I'll go ahead and copy it across. And then finally, uh, this is going to be our objective cell, and it's going to record how much uh, it's going to cost to ship everything. So to do that, I'm going to use the sum product function. And it requires two arrays. They have to be the same size. It doesn't have to be a, a row or a column. As you can see, it can be rows and columns. And then the second argument is going to be the changing cells. Okay, so with that, our model is actually now set up and we're ready to go ahead and try to see if we can find a solution with Solver. Now, I should point out that this problem is relatively simple. If you just look at it, you can kind of intuitively see what's going to happen. It should choose the cheapest option to ship uh, from an origin to a destination. So uh, 110 is the cheapest way to ship from uh, a facility, a manufacturing facility, to a destination. So you can guess that it's going to use 
uh, all of that capacity that it can. If you're working for something like Target, a much bigger problem, right, with maybe thousands of destinations and many different uh, products that you're trying to get out there, uh, the problem becomes much bigger and it's almost impossible to solve intuitively. All right, but in these examples, uh, you can look at it and pretty much guess what's going to happen. All right, so to initiate Solver, I'm going to go to the Data menu, and then uh, you're going to have to have turned on Solver, and you'll find that in Add-ins. All right, so if you go to Add-ins, you can check the box for Solver. All right, I've already done that, so I'm going to launch Solver. Once I've launched Solver, I'm going to go ahead and start filling in some of these values. All right, so. Uh, the objective cell I already started in B22, so that is the objective cell. Uh, a lot of optimization problems which you're doing is trying to maximize something. In these transportation problems, you're almost always trying to minimize something, and this time we're trying to minimize costs of shipping. I'm going to tick the minimize button, and then I'm going to select the changing cells. All right, so the changing cells are going to be these yellow ones. I'll kind of point, click, and drag there. And then we need to add constraints. So I'll click Add, and then I will select this range of cells, and I'm going to make it less than or equal to this range of cell, the constraint. I'm going to add a second constraint, and I'm going to compare these shipped or received cells, and I'm going to make sure that they're at least meeting the demand. So I have to change that from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. Then I'm done with my constraints. All right, so we get a sort of report here of the constraints that the model is going to be working with. Uh, there's a box here that we can make sure that it doesn't negatively ship something from a origin to a destination. All right, otherwise we'd have to include a non-negativity constraint up here. All right, it's a linear model, so I'm going to go ahead and check simplex, and this is going to allow us to get a nice sensitivity report. Uh, after Solver finds the optimal solution here. All right, with all that done, uh, we can just click Solve. It finds a solution, and then it asks us, do we want to keep the solution? Yes, I do. And then I'm going to tick off a sensitivity report so we can take a look at that. Okay, so we can see here our optimal solution, and as predicted, it did try to ship a lot from uh, origin A to destination A. All right, it had to split up the supply between A and D. All right, and then it moved on and tried to fill the remaining demands. All right, so there's our optimal solution. It's going to cost us $19,210 to ship. I'm going to take a quick look at the sensitivity report that we generated. There's lots of sensitivity analysis we can run on this, but this is the most simple and since Solver generates it as a byproduct, it makes sense to work with it. Now, anything that has a positive flow, like origin A to destination A, uh, it's not going to have a reduced cost. And that's what we're interested in here. The reduced cost says that, well, we didn't ship from origin A to destination B. And the reason why is we would have to reduce the cost to ship from uh, A to B by a dollar before it started becoming more economically feasible to ship from that location. All right? And we can make that same judgment for all of these paths that have a positive uh, reduced cost. Okay, so I hope that helps with a transportation problem and solver.